Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I've had a lot of people ask me lately about the HTP TIG welders. So this video is using a HTP Invertig 221H ACDC TIG welder. 220 amps in a pretty small package. Also had a fellow send me this uh, valve cover here. He's getting into the valve cover making business. And so I agreed to take one of these things and kind of weld it without the fixtures just weld it and, and kind of work through it and see if I could offer him some tips in doing it. So in doing these, we're going to do some butt joints, uh, some outside corner joints, as well as some, some of these joints, which I'm really not sure what technically you would call that. But that's okay. There's lots of weird little welds that are kind of hard to pigeonhole into a joint type or weld type. So we're going to work through this thing, and uh, as I notice things, I'll just mention them. One thing is it's got a lot of tape residue. That's got to go. Before you do any wire brushing or sanding or cleaning or anything, you need to get all the residue, grease, oil, whatnot off of aluminum. You'll just smear it in with a wire brush or a Scotch-Brite pad or whatever you use to clean with. Now, acetone is not good for you. It can absorb right through your skin, go to your organs, so wear latex or similar gloves. And hear that sound? I'm 55, so whenever I hear that, a little part of me dies. But seriously, Acetone is about the best thing to clean tape residue like this. It takes quite a bit of it sometimes, but it will get it all off. And also, I'm going to use this carbide burr in a drill motor here, and I'm going to do a little bit of uh, cleaning on the file on the uh, soft saw cut edges. Now, rough saw cuts can pose a problem, as well as uh, holes that are that are jagged. Like if these holes were plasma cut, you definitely need to ream them out. Probably a reamer would actually be the best thing. You can actually use a file also on the, but, but raw, rough cut, saw cut edges uh, are going to give you a little bit of contamination in the puddle. All right, this HTP TIG welder came with a nice uh, number 17 air-cooled CK torch. What I want to do is I'm going to put a stubby, a stubby nozzle kit on there, also available from CK, because I have become spoiled, and I like my torches small. I also kind of like to use air-cooled torches just so I don't have to hear the uh, water cooler run um, and for the simplicity of them and all that. But this is a very nice torch with a very flexible cable on it, but I'm just going to shorten it up a little bit and make it real nice. So it's almost going to be as small as a, a water-cooled torch with that stubby nozzle on there. It just makes it a whole lot more maneuverable and uh, it just feels better to me. And you can see the difference in the in, in cups there. I, I lose a full inch, shortens it up a full inch just about, and then I put that short back cap on there. So that's what I like. All right, first thing I'm going to weld is these uh, little these little tubes inside the holes here where the uh, bolts run through to hold the valve cover on. You can see I've got a tapered electrode. It's 2% lanthanated, 332nd electrode, which is uh, 2.4 millimeters. For the folks anywhere outside the U.S., probably. And I've got it balled just a little bit, so I'm letting that cleaning action kind of do its thing before I puddle, and then get it puddled, and then get both pieces to puddle, and then kind of put a little bit of wire in there, and then jab it to get them joined. And then I'll just kind of work the foot pedal, using kind of just enough amperage to walk that puddle around, trying not to roll any, any more metal than I have to on the inside. Of the uh, of the hole to clog the hole up. If I do, I can always run a reamer or drill bit down in there and kind of it's just aluminum, so it'll cut out really easily. But I don't want to ask for trouble, so I'm just gonna you know try to watch where I direct that arc, and it's not very hard to do. You can I've got the uh, frequency set to uh, about 150 there, which really focuses the arc. So did all those, and then it's time to again. I'm not using the the, the proper fixturing for this. There's fixturing design to hold that mating surface flat. I'm just trying to work through the fit up and tacking and, and uh, what I give some feedback on some things that I notice. So these fits aren't going to be perfect, but this is the outside corner joint, and I'll try to get the fits as good as I can, but I'll have to live with whatever I have. So I've got to kind of clamp down there, get ready to tack the, the end pieces in. And for tacking, I'm going to get this thing as even and, and close as I can, but for tacking, oftentimes I'll prop the cup right directly on a joint like this and put a little pressure on it and close up a little gap while I'm tacking it, just if I don't have a clamp 
uh, easy way of clamping everything tight from every direction. So I got one tack on it there, and then we'll get another one here. See, it lights up pretty low. It's, this, this machine has a nice low start, low enough actually that it um, has a hard time running, jumping that arc off the tip. So I could have actually, you know, on, on this particular joint, could have done it with a 1 16th electrode, but there are certain areas that get thicker. So I, you know, a 332nd is a better all around choice for this. It just doesn't, it just uh, wanders a little bit on start until I get it up to about probably 10 amps or so where the arc will pop off the tip. And again, getting more tacks here, getting lots of tacks on this thing so I don't lose the fit up. And now the other side will do, well, see how rough that is, that, that piece of tubing? That was uh, probably just chamfered, beveled with a, with a grinding wheel and that, that poses problem too. You'll see a lot of little specks floating around in the puddle here. That would have actually been probably helpful for me to chuck it up in a drill motor and run it against the file or put it in a lathe and, and spin it down nice and clean. Not doing too badly here, but you can see it pick up some trash. Any Anytime you have a really rough surface from grinding, you're going to have embedded grit. You're going to Just the, the fact that it's so rough means there's a lot of pockets for oxidation and whatnot. And you can see it all float up to the surface there as well. But um, it just depends on the application. It's not an ideal thing to have stuff like that floating around, but sometimes it, it, it's acceptable. It depends on what you're doing. Now that's a pretty good little gap right there. It's about, it, it's it's well over the diameter of a rod. It's a good 332nd gap. So sometimes on, on gaps like that, what you can do is if you want the end product to look pretty decent, you can just fill the gap in really cold. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. I mean, that looks like Fido right there. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weld, I'm using 1 16th filler here, I'm just going to weld right up to it where I've got a decent fit up. And then when I get to that point where the weld is ugly, I'll stop adding rod and I'll just pulse manually with the foot pedal and try to put some ripples in there that, are, that look a lot like what uh, the rest of the weld looks like. And so that's that's what that winds up looking like. Not not great, not anything to write home about, but it looks uh, doesn't look all that weird either. Looks better, that's for sure. I have tapered the electrode a little bit here. At one point, I started out with 120 hertz, and then I wound up turning it up to 150 hertz, uh, kind of just messing around with the frequency. And it actually seemed to improve the bead profile a little bit by focusing the arc cone a little bit for some of these joints, keeping the bead pretty small and still get good full penetration where, where it's needed. All right. Another little shot of a same type of joint with a better fit up. See, it's not keyholing out. Better the fit up, the better the weld, no doubt. That holds true pretty much across the board. You can't, no matter how skillful you are in welding, if you got a bad fit, your weld's not going to be as good as if it was a good fit. All right. Well, let's look at some of the weld settings here. This is basically what I use, 120 amps, but I use the foot pedal, so rarely did I need full 120. 150 on the frequency, AC balance set to 65. And this machine, in addition to AC balance, has got a feature that is unusual for a machine in this price range. It's got an amplitude setting, which means you can independently adjust the amperage on the electrode negative and the electrode positive sides of the uh, alternating current cycle. Dynasty 350, for instance, has this feature, but the, but the ones below it do not. All right, so this thing came in the shop. I wasn't expecting this for this particular video, but I thought this would be a really good test of any 220 amp machine. And to do it, I'm going to use an argon helium mix. This is the argon flow meter. I'm floating it up to about 10 CFH. And then this is the helium, roughly a little bit more than that, using a number seven gas lens. And the reason is because this is one inch thick solid aluminum. And so I know I'm going to be pushing the limits. Now, I don't have to get huge penetration here. This is not a 
full strength weld, this is going this this piece is going to be a measuring device. So it's going to hold a uh, an, uh, a dial indicator of some kind. So it's more for dimensional stability, being so thick than it is for you know strength or anything like that. But it's still an inch thick aluminum. It takes a lot of heat. But you can see that puddled almost immediately. Now you notice it's got a flutter to it. I found I've learned recently that um, you can if you're if you're borderline having enough amps on an inverter like this. You can actually put more heat into the piece by going lower on the frequency rather than higher. Higher focuses the arc cone, lower puts more puts more heat in. So I'm, I've cut it all the way down to 50 hertz here, just messing around. And sure enough, it did help puddle that stuff quicker. And I need all the help I can get because I'm full pedal at 220 amps here. And it's just enough. But it, it did the job and did a pretty good job. So. That's the HTP Invertig 221H ACDC, and you can learn more about it um, at usaweld.com or by calling this 800 number, and you can tell them you saw it on Welding Tips and Tricks if you, if you take a notion. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again here real soon.